Warren Buffett just bought TSMC and the stock surged. But it is still down quite a lot from its all-time high. In this video, I'll deep dive into TSMC's business performance and analyze the company's investment potential. Stay tuned until the end to extract the maximum value from this analysis. As always, always set with educational purposes and is not meant to be taken as financial advice. When it comes to the semiconductor industry, TSMC has a global supremacy as 53.4% of the global pure play foundry market is in their hands. It is important to understand the different divisions of the semiconductor space. The foundry market is one segment of the semiconductor space, for example, Intel and Samsung design and manufacture their own chips. TSMC is a foundry player, which means they manufacture chips for other companies that don't have the capacity to do so. When it comes to the foundry semiconductor space, the global market share per company is as follows. TSMC is number one by a large margin and then comes Samsung which is also in this space as it produces semiconductors for other companies as well as they produce their own chips. Samsung owns 16.5% of the global market. On spot number three is UMC the United Microelectronics Corporation, which is also a Taiwanese company and it has a 7.2% share. The fourth spot goes to Global Foundries Inc., which has a 5.9% share. The global semiconductor foundry market is estimated to be valued at over 171 billion USD by 2030 representing a CAGR of 7.9% from 2022 to 2030 according to Global Newswire. CAGR stands for Compounded Annual Growth Rate. This growth is a pretty good one, which is a pretty good underlying growth for the industry and in a moment we'll see how TSMC is crushing this average industry growth. The main drivers for growth in the industry are internet connected devices that collect and analyze data using sensors and software. This will be a big development area for semiconductors. Smart factories, for example, may help you to monitor shop floor activities and ensure that every equipment is running at maximum efficiency, freeing up floor space and lowering prices. Furthermore, the emergence of smart homes allows consumers to utilize a smartphone app to control their home's lighting and appliances. IoT devices may also enable users to remotely monitor security elements in their homes. Another catalyst is the ever-increasing 5G connections and soon-to-come 6G. Now that we know the main industry specifics of TSMC and its market positioning, let's analyze their latest business results. In their Q3 earnings report, they stated that the year-over-year -year growth in revenue is 35.9%, which is quite the rate of increase. On the following graph, TSMC is showcasing their year-on-year -year monthly growth. What can be seen is that throughout 2022, the business growth is insane, with an average rate of growth close to 40%. This is not only industry-leading growth, but it is an insane growth for any other industry. The percentages are showing the increases to TSMC's revenue, but let's now see how this revenue is broken down. The business of TSMC could be placed in six categories. Automotives take 4% of their business revenue share, digital consumer electronics take a 3% share, and the Internet of Things or IoT sector for short takes a 9% revenue share. The big boy spaces for TSMC are in the high performance computing with a 37% share and the smartphone sector which has a 44% revenue share of TSMC's business. The last sixth revenue segment is specified as others. 
It is also important to note that 25% of TSMC's revenue is coming directly from Apple as TSMC is their main chip supplier and as stated by Reuters, during the following year, Apple plans to continue its relationship with TSMC. In the future, iPhones and Macs will include chips from the company. Apple is ordering both their M1 and M2 chips from Taiwan. Also, Qualcomm is another big customer of TSMC. In the Q3 report, TSMC stated they have a net profit margin of 45.8%. This is a huge net profit margin and it means for every dollar of sales, the company is putting in 45 cents to its bottom line. Also even more impressive is that the company is paying out a solid dividend and the dividend is paid before the earnings. In a bit, I'll analyze the dividend's security levels. This huge net profit margin is a great safety net for the company and it is showing me as a potential investor that the company's efficiency is very respectable. On the following chart you can see how the net margin has changed over the last 12 years. Today TSMC has the highest margin over the last 12 year period, showcasing that they have never had a more efficient business when it comes to profitability. This is an awesome sign. Also, in terms of growth, this year's revenue increases are not something out of this world for TSMC. As you can see, over the last 12 years, their year-on-year -year quarterly growth is incredible. And it is almost always quite high on a constant basis. Over the last 3 years, the growth has been almost always above 25-30% which is a very strong revenue performance. At the same time, the current multiple of TSMC is not high at all in relation to their business growth potential. Strong mode and very high efficiency, which is becoming even better over time as we saw. Over the last 12 years, the median PE for TSMC is around 16. During late 2020 and 2021, the PE ratio of TSMC got way out of norm as it reached more than 30. Most recently, before Buffett disclosed his position on the 15th of November, the PE of TSMC was trading at about 12, which is below its 12-year average and extremely low in relation to their growth and other business metrics. The earnings multiple rule of Peter Lynch states that the PE should not be higher than the expected future growth. In the eyes of TSMC, their expected growth is again in the 20-30% to range and with their current PE of 16.5, they are not only undervalued in relation to their growth, but they are also exactly around their average level over the last 12 years. The forward PE ratio is expected to be 11.4 which is also extremely low. In terms of business efficiency, Buffett really likes the ROIC and ROE metrics, which for TSMC are extremely high. The return on invested capital is 40.1%, while the return on equity is 41.8%. We want these metrics to be 12% or higher, and at the moment they are around 3.5 times bigger. The debt management of TSMC is also very strong. The long-term debt-to-equity ratio is 0.32. According to Warren Buffett, this is best to be below 0.5 and it is. Also, the company has nearly 50 billion in cash on hand, which is a 50% increase since a year ago. The dividend of TSMC is also very stable with a dividend payout ratio of 0.32 and a 5-year dividend growth rate of 13.1%. This means that the dividends are only 32% of the total earnings, which is a very safe zone and it indicates the growth in the dividend could increase. The current dividend yield is 2.26%, which is also quite nice. From all perspectives, I like TSMC as a business 
and I really like it as an investment. Also due to Buffett's investment into the company, I think now that the risk of a China-Taiwan conflict are much lower than expected. This is the main risk regarding this investment at the moment. In general, when a business has a big moat, low debts, very high efficiency and it is undervalued in relation to its earnings, usually it's a buy for me. I hope this video was of value to you and if it was, please like and subscribe so I can bring even more valuable content to you. You can comment down below which other topics you want me to cover next here on the channel. Goodbye for now and until next time.